Welcome to Better You. In this video, we are going to do a quick revision of carbohydrate digestion and absorption in ruminant animals. So ruminant animals feed upon forest substances that are rich in structural carbohydrates like cellulase. But the mammalian enzymes are only able to break alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages of the starch but they are ineffective against cellulose. Okay, so for that reason, ruminants have a complex stomach. Okay, their stomach has four chambers, rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. Out of these, the first three, rumen, reticulum, and omasum, are not true stomachs. Okay, they are only there for fermentation of the feed. And only the fourth chamber, that is the abomasum, is true stomach or glandular stomach. Okay, so the rumen is the main uh, fermentation vat where the main uh, fermentation process takes place and it has a variety of microorganisms present there for the purpose of fermentation okay so the first of these uh, organisms are cellulolytic bacteria okay and they belong to the genera bacteroids ruminococcus and bitaro vibrio and they utilize the pentoses and exoses for themselves and in return they release vfa volatile fatty acid okay so basically uh, all the cellulose and starch and uh, hexocellulose and everything that is um, eaten by the cattle is consumed by these bacteria okay and in return the cattle gets vfas volatile fatty acids okay so we have acetate butyrate and propionate then there's amylolytic bacteria which again digest the starches but in return give lactic acid and very little vfa okay so the end product of the amylolytic bacteria is lactic acid okay and this lactic acid is going to decrease the ph and for that reason we have another group of bacteria called as lactate utilizing bacteria or lactolytic bacteria they consume this lactic acid and then in return produce vfa okay so the balance of the, these three types of bacteria is very essential for the proper functioning of the rumen and other than bacteria there are also some fungi and protozoa and even some viruses present in the rumen so the fungi are there to utilize the lignin that is present in the feed material then large and small protozoans are there and they consume the bacteria okay and they do not uh, produce anything in return but the only significance of these protozoans is that uh, they can be used to check acidity okay so if you take sample of the human fluid and if there are very few or absolutely no protozoa present there, then you can say that the, there may be rumen acidity. Why? Because these protozoa are very sensitive to rumen uh, acidity. Okay. So what should be the normal pH of the rumen? It should be above 5.7. But if it is below 5.7 pH, then these protozoa will die. And this condition is called as rumen lactic acidosis. Okay. So in this case, there's excess of lactic acid and this will cause decrease in the ph of the rumen and in return it will also cause acidosis metabolic acidosis which can lead to shock so it is a very dangerous condition and this occurs when we give a very high starch or we can say very uh, high soluble sugar containing diet to cattle okay so these are all the microorganisms that are responsible for digestion of carbohydrates in the rumen in ruminant animals so what is the digestion process like so first, the complex carbohydrates like cellulose and hemicellulose, they are digested by the enzymes of the cellulolytic and amylolytic bacteria. Okay, so these bacteria have cellulase enzyme which will break the beta 1 to 4 glycosidic linkages of complex carbohydrates like cellulose. Okay, then uh, the cellulose by the action of these enzymes is converted into sim simple sugars like glucose. Okay, and then the bacteria will convert the glucose into pyruvate which in turn will be converted into the three main volatile fatty acid acetate butyrate propionate okay so we have acetate butyrate and propionate along with this uh, there are another set of bacteria that is present in cattle that is called methanogens okay and methanogens uh, use the carbon dioxide and uh, the hydrogen that is produced during the fermentation process and they combine these two molecules together to form methane okay so methane and carbon dioxide they are two main gaseous components of the uh, rumen contents okay so what are the end products of ruminant uh, digestion of carbohydrates so we have gases like carbon dioxide methane and hydrogen gas carbon dioxide accounts for 30 to 40 percent 
while carbon dioxide account for 50 to 60 percent of the total gases produced in rumen then vfas uh, there are three acetate propionate and butyrate do not look at this thing this is wrong so acetate constitute about 60 to 65 percent propionate 15 to 20 uh, percent and butyrate 10 to 15 percent of the total vfa produced during digestion of carbohydrate okay there are two important points that when you have high grain diet there's increase in the concentration of vfa because high grain will have uh, a greater amount of carbohydrate so greater amount of vfa but if there's too much production of vfa then we will see a decrease in the ph of the rumen okay one more thing that whenever we give high forage diet so we give good quality roughage to the cattle then in this case the production of the propionate will increase and this is very very good then uh, let us talk about the vfa absorption so the end product of the ruminant carbohydrate digestion is vfa that is the most important end product okay now how this vfa is getting absorbed so vfa has two form non-dissociated and dissociated okay so the non-dissociated form is lipid soluble so it can cross the membrane uh, of the ruminal epithelium very easily okay so see this is a squamous cell of the mucosa of the rumen okay here we have the lumen represented by l okay so this surface right here is called the apical surface and this surface of the squamous cell is called as the basolateral membrane so we have apical membrane and basolateral membrane these are the cell membrane of the cell that is lining the mucosa of the rumen okay then we have the dissociated form of the vfa and non dissociated form so see they are in equilibrium in the rumen uh, ruminal lumen okay but because the non dissociated form is lipid soluble it will easily cross the membrane of the cell and it will enter into the cytosol okay in the cytosol then again there will be equilibrium but uh, the non dissociated form is lipid soluble so it will easily cross the membrane basolateral membrane and it will enter into the blood vessel that is uh, present in the mucosa and submucosa layer of the rumen okay so that is how uh, the absorption of the vfa will take place okay one important thing that is uh, written here is that above each layer of squamous epithelial cell there is an unstirred water layer that is held in place by surface tension the epithelial cell remove sodium ion from the water layer and secrete bicarbonate ion therefore decreasing the ph okay when the ph of the water layer decreases there is increased association of vfa okay so this dissociated form of the vfa is converted into the non dissociated form by the presence of this unstirred water level above this surface okay and what uh, will happen because we have an increased amount of non dissociated form or the associated form of vfa it is easily able to pass the membrane so the, uh, there's increase in efficiency of absorption of vfa okay so this is it for the carbohydrate digestion and vfa absorption in case of ruminants i hope you like this video if so hit the like button share this video with your friends and if you haven't then subscribe to my channel thank you